This is the Moto G3, and in 2015, this was the budget smartphone, proving that budget doesn't mean bodged Android experience. Of course, three years in technology is a long time, but have we seen enough improvements to render this phone completely unusable? Back in 2015, Motorola had just changed hands with Google to Chinese brand Lenovo, who took a lot of their design cues for this sub £200 smartphone from their first release as the new Google Motorola in the form of the Moto X. As you'd expect based upon the pricing, the majority of this unit is plasticky, but that doesn't make it feel uncomfortable or bad in any way, thanks to some of the aforementioned design cues taken from the Moto X. Nice and chunky, the smooth back curve and removable plastic back plate helps it sit in the palm of your hand without digging in with sharp edges, whilst the standard grooved back plate texture gives it an extra grip feeling sensation when in your hand. Overall the handling is great, comfortable and assuring when compared to all of these glass phones that we're suddenly becoming accustomed to. Right there on the back of the device is also a small dimple that would have been an ideal place for a fingerprint scanner, but considering this was a budget device some three years ago, its omission is not a major issue, instead the dimple acts as a comfortable place to rest your index finger for that extra bit of stability. The back of this variant of the G3 also hosts a camera, which we'll take a good look at later on. It's a simple understated reverse side of a phone that won't catch any eyes, but it does get the job done and well. Flipping over to the front of the Moto G, whilst the screen does seem small, the chins and bezels are overblown by today's standards, it hasn't made it age badly by any means. And whilst front facing speakers are slowly finding themselves back on phones, and although these do look like they are two twin speakers, it is in fact just an earpiece and a bottom facing speaker, which doesn't produce the sound of any acclaim, it's just a shame that Motorola opted to not include stereo speakers with this particular model. Screen-wise, I'd deem it acceptable, but in all likelihood probably not for anyone used to using a smart device in 2018. It's a 720p panel with a 294 ppi rating, which is pretty poor given the standard of budget phones today, but it is best suited to the internals that power this 5-inch screen. Whilst I'm not 100% certain, I do believe it is a plastic touchscreen or cheaper glass equivalent, making it feel slightly cheap and with a little flex if pressed heavily. And with that cost cutting measure, there are some issues with touch latency that were brought about with the update to Android Marshmallow 2. I was experiencing phantom touches now and again, and I'm only seeing this now on the lock screen since updating the software in the past couple of months. Coming from higher end phones, the touch screen doesn't quite feel as good, making for an unsatisfying feeling when in usage, but that doesn't mean the interface and everyday operation aren't slick. And that is just how I would describe using the Moto G slick. Without needing powerhouse specs, this close to stock experience doesn't require a great deal of processing and graphical power to get the job done. Multitasking of course isn't perfect, there are some pauses and hiccups here and there, but this is about compromise at such a low price point. The lack of a manufacturer skin means that there is little bloat to speak of, just a few Motorola apps, it's very Nexus but wrapped in completely different hardware. One of the few Motorola changes are the gesture controls for turning the torch on and off, and even an FM tuner for audio that uses no web connection at all. With low in specs, the battery is where I think this device possibly benefits the most. Although I haven't had a SIM card in at the moment, when I have used this as a spare phone, it regularly lasted me two to three days. With no SIM card installed and barely being used, it lasts for around a week, which considering its age is simply astounding. And of course, to keep that price down even lower, there are a few other bells and whistles that have been removed to further improve performance. That of course means no NFC support, meaning no Android Pay, but the snap-on plastic back does mean an IPX7 waterproof rating for this cheaper smartphone. Straight out of the box, storage comes in an option of 8 or 16 gigabytes, which to me doesn't quite cut the mustard, but it can be increased via the micro SD card slot up to a maximum of 32 gigabytes. Now of course you'll want that extra storage if you're into taking photos, and this is one area that upon release was a surprisingly impressive element of this device, and of that of course is the camera. 
Whilst the front facing camera is an absolute potato, the rear camera is a 13 megapixel shooter that is more than capable of taking some decent pictures and can record 1080p at 30fps video should you desire to record some videos. Whilst it didn't stack up against the higher end phones of the time, the fact that the pictures aren't terrible is one of the key reasons that this is such an impressive portion of the device. Just to give you an indication of how good this camera performs, here's a few images and some video taken with the Moto G3 for you to make up your own mind about the performance levels. So should this be considered a purchase in 2018, even at the low end? Well despite faring well and being a great long lasting device that hasn't degraded massively in both operation and form thanks to the plastic build, as a main device I do think it would be a poor investment unless your budget is unable to stretch beyond £40 or $50. As a forerunner of the brilliant budget bang for your buck smartphones, the Moto G3 2015 iteration has to be considered a landmark moment for consumer choice though. Even if its age and price tag hasn't put you off and you'd like to check it out then I'll leave some direct links to the Moto G3 in the description. Like the vid if you've enjoyed this look back at what I would consider a classic smartphone and subscribe already if you haven't done so. But that's just about enough from me so until next time I will speak to you later.